BTD6 is enjoyed by a lot of players, ranging from casual poppers to master bombers. But what strategies are the strongest? Today, we're going to explore three of the strongest synergies in chimps mode that are undoubtedly the best in the game at the moment. Just remember, we're focusing on the best strategies, not the easiest today. So keep that in mind before typing out an angry comment explaining why your Bloon Jutsu Berserker Brew combo is much better than anything here. Anyway, let's get stuck right into it. First up, we've got a return of a classic, Poppinor with Striker Jones. It's no surprise that after the massive buffs to Poppinor's damage and attack speed that it received in patch 39, that Poppinor is going to be a massive powerhouse. Thankfully, they've scaled it back to something much more reasonable, with it no longer being able to fully solo a bad by itself, instead having to rely on dedicated damage like a mob eliminator. Don't let that fool you though, because Poppinor is still wildly powerful, thanks to its consistent damage output and its insane ability. With proper micro, you can make some wild save ups happen. Poppinor is great with towers that can easily pop mobs, but struggle with cleanup. So pair it with a mid path bomb shooter, main mob, or something like a sticky bomb. When using Poppinor, be sure to make use of Striker Stun as well for consistent damage output. If you're looking to make the strategy work, you're either going to have to get comfortable with some heavy mortar micro, or restrict it to a map that favours it, like Moon Lading and Spillway. Though it can work with any map, given the map wide range it has. Mortars can be a bit inconsistent, so I'd rate this a gold border strategy, though with enough practice or a suitable map, it can easily black border most maps. Next up, we've got the return of the king, Corvus and his two henchmen, the Prince of Darkness and Permaspike. Even after Corvus received some pretty heavy nerfs at the start of the patch, the Spirit Walker still reigns supreme as the best hero in the game, offering an amazing toolbox to whoever can learn what the heck this soul is. Thankfully, the strategy is relatively simple, depending on how you wish to play it. You'll use Corvus to save up to Necromancer with something like a Druid of the Jungle, farming up experience the entire way with his Soul Siphon ability and Nourishment combo. Repeat this all the way up into Prince of Darkness, and then buy whatever else you so desire, usually some mad expensive tower. Here I use it to buy up the rest of the wizard access, though much like Poppinor, I'd recommend something with massive damage, like Attack Zone or Sky Shredder, while using Corvus's massive late game damage as insurance. Focus on using combos like Echo and Hands or Echo and Overload to completely decimate high density rounds. On the other hand, if you're using Perma Spike, it's the exact opposite, as you'll want to try to stall out for as long as possible to allow the spikes to build up. It's the same sort of idea, farming up Corvus in the early game while trying to get a decent save up to get you up to Perma Spike. Afterwards, you'll completely focus on trying to stall out for Corvus's abilities to come up so you can farm up massive experience while building up your spike pile. Worst comes to worst, you can always combine both strategies together, focusing on both the Prince of Darkness and Perma Spike. This will mean that you will have to rely heavily on single target damage as your support, so your Perma Spike won't be too effective, but that doesn't necessarily mean it can't take a ceramic or two. All in all, using this strategy in Chimps does require you to have some basic understanding of how to use Corvus, but it turns out he's incredibly easy once you know how. It's a great black border strategy for beginner maps that can struggle a little bit once you start incorporating multiple lanes, like Ravine or Ouch. Finishing up, it would be wrong of me not to include everyone's favourite shopkeep in the list, Heraldo, paired with his favourite Comanche commander. Well, I say that. However, more often than not, you can forego the powerful tier 5 in the strategy, solely focusing on the tier 4 variant, the Comanche defence, as a powerful save-up tool for whatever higher cost tower you might be aspiring to. The strategy is relatively simple, using Geraldo's powerful yet temporary items to buff up Comanche, which will happily accept most of it. Items like Pickles, Sharpening Stone, Hot Sauce, and Camo Potions all synergize incredibly well with what Comanche wants to do, which, surprise surprise, is destroy Bloons. The reason it's so powerful is unlike an expensive Apache Prime or a hit and miss special operations, the Comanche line is incredibly powerful at all stages of the game, even well into the 90s, meaning that you'll never really feel like you're truly struggling. Except with Micro, because that's a common theme with all these powerhouse strategies. Unfortunately, you do have to move your Comanche to get the most of it, yet it's possibly the easiest out of the three, so take that to heart. Comanche is also relatively easy to fit into a build for this reason, as you can use a cheap save up tower like a Druid of the Jungle paired with an early Geraldo item or two to get you up to Comanche defense. And realistically, you don't need much else from there. It's a simple case of applying more items when needed to save up to Comanche Commander. With proper micro and a diligent save up, this can be afforded in the late 60s to 70s, but more often than not, a regular build will afford Comanche by about round 80. Comanche is also a great all round tower, but can struggle with ceramic leaks on multi lane maps, so follow up with something like a Spirit of the Forest, 
blue and silver, or spiked mines. Command Shade Commander is a very easy recommend if you're looking to black border some maps, as it's incredibly consistent damage wise and offers strong utility in the mid game. So there you have it, these are the three most powerful chimp strategies in balloons at the moment. Thought I missed one? Feel free to comment down below with your chimp strategy of choice. Otherwise, that's all for today, I'll see you all next time.